Um, and then it came to a point that <clears throat> I was in my early 20s and the weights were not enough. So I went to a Total Fitness gym, just had a lot more free weights. They had squat racks, um, all that stuff. So I, I ended up there. And that's really when I started to obviously get in my early 20s and start to get a bit stronger. And it was around people that, there were people in there that squatted. There were people in there that deadlifted. It was the first time I'd ever seen a deadlift in person. Weirdly. I'd been in a gym for oh, five, probably five years prior, and I'd never seen a deadlift in person. <laughs> Welcome to the Shaw Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Shaw, and today I am joined by Mr. Graham Hicks, former Britain Strongest Man, eight times on the podium with Giants Live. Yeah, I've had eight Giants podiums now, yeah. So you have been competing in Strongman for a while, and uh, I feel like you've got an interesting story to tell, man. Maybe. I, I imagine I've got a different story to tell than most. Um, but we'll get into that. You know, yeah, I mean, I've, absolutely. I've, I've done a little bit of powerlifting. Um, I may do some more powerlifting. You know. And that may be something we might talk about here a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you know, I've, I, I've had a quite a long career. You know, I mean, I only started a few years probably after you did, really, when you, you know. Um, but I still feel like I've got a lot of years left in me and I'm still getting better. So No, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I haven't probably competed as much as many other guys. Mainly that's because of family stuff you know I've had you know a full-time job for most of this career and kids and you know I just always took a step away when I had to made sure that you know like the family was the priority and the job was the priority uh, and the gym came in when when I had you know chance and time to do the gym absolutely yeah um, and that's probably helped to my longevity as well well it would, naturally I mean it will um so Take me back. Take me back to the start. Like, like growing up for you, what was that like? Were you into sports a lot? Were you not? I mean, I don't even know if you've. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have a sister. I have a sister. Um, okay, and I have a half brother. But okay, I, I don't really. I don't speak to either of either of them really. Um, that's a story for another day. No, you know, yeah, like yeah. Me, me, and my sort of family, if you will, my bloodline family, uh, not very close. Um, so. Yeah, I <clears throat> I have a sister and a half brother. But as as a, as a youngster, I was always very sporty. Um, I loved football. Uh, I did a lot of karate when I was younger. So football, as in soccer, soccer, right? Like, yeah, like soccer for the not, Americans, not yeah. American football. We have to we have to <laughs> <laughs> clarify that. Yeah. Um, so soccer, you played soccer growing up. Yeah, loved okay. it. I was uh, I was quite mad on it. Um, I played for teams throughout high school, um, and then when I when I left school I always played like five a side it was very popular um, and I, st I played for you know Sunday league teams as well so wow. I was playing football maybe four times a week and then only when I got to 25 I mean I started the gym probably at 16 but um, it was just there was no structure to it I did it as a bit of a hobby um, I, I always played football like it was a few of us that did the same thing, and we used to say, "Oh, we don't need to train legs because we play football." Sure, you know, <laughs> you're, so, run, you're running so, so much, so we didn't train legs. Um, first time I ever did a, a a proper squat and a proper deadlift, I was 25. So you would you had started the gym at, at 16, yeah. So never lifted really before that at all. Not really, no. Okay, no. so you're going in there. I'm, I'm assuming it's a lot of tra training the muscles you can see in the mirror. Of course, of right, course, right. yeah. Mainly, so like a lot yeah, of curls, a lot of a lot of curls, chest, okay, uh, okay. shoulders, bit of back, uh, and obviously abs, which I didn't see much of at the time. But yeah, you know, like I didn't know any better, and to be honest, neither did anyone else. You know, of course, like, I, I was in a gym that was very um, spit and sawdust at the time. It was a very short walk from where my high school was. I literally had to walk over a bridge and a two minute walk from there. And I was there, um, and it was like it was very cheap. I think it was like fifteen pound a month, um, and I, I was probably the youngest kid in there. You know, like I went in there, and it was full of all these big guys, um, all in their string vests, slinging all this weights around. Yeah, yeah. But I loved it, and uh, you know they welcomed me, and they loved they loved me in there. 
Um, and, I, and I was quite strong on a few things. Like I, I quickly got to a hundred kilo bench very fast. Um, and pressing's kind of been my thing in, in strongman, you know. But yeah, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I feel like you might have lifted a few heavy logs, <laughs> you know, that type of thing in in your day for sure. We can get into talking about that as well. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So I, I, I got hooked. I, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed the feeling of training. Um, it made me feel good. I mean, I was always a bit chubbier as a kid in phases, but you know, like going to the gym and playing football, um, it it was good for me, you know. And I was I was very healthy and I was good at football. I always used used to like tackling mainly. I didn't really want the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone likes to score a goal, but my uh, my thing for football was I, I used to play defense and I used to just love tackling people. Um, if I could hurt people, then bonus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's. I mean, that's uh, fair. Were, uh, were, is that? I mean, is that allowed? Is that allowed tackling? Or that's like? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, obviously, football's progressed a bit from then. It's it's become a little bit more non-contact, in my opinion. Um, there's a lot more fairies in football. You know, back then when we it was, played, you know, what's like, what's that uh, joke that that's going around? It's it's like uh, something where. You know, it, w- it would either be like a rugby player, American football actually gets hit, and then there's like somebody playing, you know, I guess what real football is versus, you know, soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and they, they get touched, and they act <laughs> they act like, like the end of the world's happening, and they're on the ground rolling around. Like. I, ju- I just saw one yesterday of the Man United goalie, um, and I think someone touched his arm, and he got on the floor, and then he gets up, and he's like doing this with his arm, and you're thinking he literally just got touched touched that was all it was and it's just it's pathetic and, yeah. it, and it's spoiling the game because well that's I, how that's how it is honestly with yeah. basketball right like the, i mean you go back back a number of years and it was it was much more physical much more hard contact and now it's very much a game of you can't really touch anybody at all or it's a foul yeah but right? like it's i just feel like it's, so. it's teaching the younger generations a very very bad thing and it's Absolutely. like you know, it, you're faking an injury. It's almost like you're teaching people how to try and cheat. Yes. It's just play the game. Yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. It's a physical game. It's a contact sport. You're going to get touched. Yes. And it's just it's just going down a bad path. And it's kind of why I fell out with, with football in a way. When I discovered Strongman, I had no interest in it anymore. I was like, this is a, this is a nice individual sport. Um, and it's a man's sport. You yeah, know, and, um, I never really went down the rugby route because we never had it at high school. Okay, um, I imagine if I if I had have done, I would have enjoyed it. I can imagine you yeah. would have. Well, if you like tackling people, yeah, playing, yeah, play, yeah. <laughs> playing before that would really be fun. But yeah. uh, anyway, you know, so I I I was at this gym, and uh, and that was probably me. I never left the gym since season sixteen. Um, but you you're saying from that from that first point, you didn't deadlift or squat until twenty five. No, no. So at all. So not no. not one of those guys in there was like, "Hey, maybe you should try." I don't think I ever saw anybody do, do that. Do that. No. In the whole gym. No. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, so, it was I guess purely maybe not it, that it, surprising it was, it was for a normal gym. Purely full of of bodybuilders in there. Okay. Um, you know, and I, I only spoke to a handful of people because everyone was so big and intimidating. Yeah, um, I only had a select few people I spoke to, but but you enjoyed it. Yeah, I loved it, and yeah. um, you know, I, I was there for a few years. Um, I ended up doing the rounds in all the gyms in my area. Really, I went from from that gym. I went to um, one that's that's on the promenade. Quite coincidentally enough, is the gym where I'm at now. <laughs> really? Yeah. So the, it was a very big functioning gym where you had, you know, like it, a big swimming pool, saunas, all that stuff. Um, you know, and, and it got closed, and the building was a wreck. And you know, I've, I've ended up taking on the old gym room, so that's where I am now. You know, I was a member there. But you're running your own gym out of there. Yeah, of course. That's, yeah. So it's not it's not a gym you're going. It's your own. Yeah, it's my own gym. Yeah. So, but you know that that's kind of cool, though, right? It is a like cool a, story. Like a full yeah. circle kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but like I always used to say um, when we used to train there, there was there's not enough weights, there's not enough machines. Um, the only rack in there was a Smith machine, so obviously, of course, I didn't squat or deadlift then because it, 
I, I couldn't. I couldn't. There was nothing in there that did Absolutely. that. Absolutely not the not the right equipment. No, yeah. so it was limited in in kit. But again, for what I was doing at the time, work another three years probably there. Yeah. Um, and then it came to a point that <clears throat> I was in my early twenties and the weights were not enough. So I went to a Total Fitness gym. I don't know if you've heard of them. Very big franchise in, in the UK. I think I saw them when I was over there at one point. Yeah. yeah. Um, just had a lot more free weights. They had squat racks, um, all that stuff. So I I ended up there. And that's really when I started to obviously get in my early 20s and start to get a bit stronger. And it was around people that there were people in there that squatted. There were people in there that deadlifted. It was the first time I'd ever seen a deadlift in person, weirdly. I've been that, in a gym for oh, five years probably five years prior and I'd never seen a deadlift in person. Well, see, the, the funny part, the funny part and not funny part is of that. A lot of gyms won't let it happen. No, no. And and if you go to a gym like that, you're, you're not going to see deadlifts because they don't let you yeah. deadlift. Well, so this, this will actually lead to where I'm going because okay. what happened in this gym was I started to like get a, a bit of a craving for strength. Like they had a, the dumbbells that always went up to like 50 kilos and, Nobody in the gym could really do a set with them. And then I started being able to. And I realized I was probably the strongest guy in the gym. But I was still a kid in relevance to a lot of these big people. Absolutely. Um, and then I started doing some deadlifts um, with some guys. And as soon as I started doing strongman and the weights got heavier, they didn't want me to deadlift anymore. Really? Yeah, because the, the weights are on the first floor. So everything under was getting affected by it, by the noise, by the vibration. Just by, by you dropping, yeah. dropping the so, bar. And, and, you know, I wasn't that strong back then. But what actually happened was I used to work the doors and one of my friends was was stood chatting to me and he was talking about strongman and he said he did um, a lightweight, so under 90 kilo class strongman. And he was like, how much do you weigh? And I was about 100 kilos. And, uh, he says, what do you do under 105? And I was just looking at this guy like, what is he even going on about? Because I didn't know what on earth he was on about. Like, so you didn't you didn't know what strongman was? I knew I watched you, you know, on TV. Okay, so just I just didn't like know some... that this went on like low level competition. So you thought it was just kind of world strongest man? Yeah, but there's no, yeah. I had no idea. So he's planted the seed. Um, obviously, I got his number, and I went and trained. And I went to a gym in Manchester. Um, and I used some kit, and I heard of a contest that was in four months, which was actually local to me. I said, oh, why not? I'll give it a go. So I actually purchased a log uh, pretty quickly. It's the same log I've got now. Is it? Yeah, it's the same. Man, same it must have been made well. That's the good. the same <laughs> metal log. They, they, the guy that make it, made it, it was one of uh, you know the athletes at the time, and they just don't make logs like that anymore. No, um, I mean, he was a very good fabricator, um, and he made a lot of stuff for years until pe other people came in and started taking the business. But um, yeah, that log I've had for for twelve years, well, nearly thirteen years now. That's crazy. Yeah. It's still um, still good. Still good. Yeah. Wow. The only thing it gets is a bit of paint now and again. Yeah, know? but that's um, much better than bending or yeah. So up. so I had I had log. We, I ordered some stones off the same guy, um, and I had to train log in my garden wasn't even flat you know like i trained the best part i could and then i created i built like a, a shelter over some stones um and that was a very big learning curve because i constantly had to sort the floor out <laughs> you know? yeah yeah i was always um wrecking the concrete underneath and i was buying matting after matting after matting and then learned i needed plywood and and then to train moving events i, I had there was a, some guys that had like yokes and farmers. So I went and did that at their house in their driveway. Um, I loved it. It was like a, almost like a, a little group of guys that did it. Um, and I was very addicted. I hadn't even competed yet. And I did the first show um, and I came seventh, which I was I was happy with. You know, Out of I, how many? I think there's about 20 guys. Um, okay. And I won an event. I won the yoke into Duck Walk. You know, I won that event, um, and it was a hundred. I've actually got a video of this contest, by the way. Is 
Is it funny to watch? Yeah, yeah, because the funny part is you wouldn't know it was me. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. Um, What what did you walk in weight? You said 100 kilos around there. Well, I probably weighed 105. Okay, so right at at the, Um, the cutoff weight. I didn't have to make weight, if you know what I mean. I didn't have to do a water cut or anything. Uh, but yeah, it 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 was it was so much fun. I I was so nervous. I didn't even want to look at the crowd. There's probably only like a hundred to to hundred fifty people watching. But man, I was terrified. But um, it was like a hundred kilo log, and I did like four reps or five reps. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but you that, you had just got a log that you were training on. Yeah, you know, okay. it, like it wasn't a this guy's going to be a good log presser. There was the thing that people saw me good at was the moving. Like when it came to moving, I was better. Yeah, um, it was never a static thing. Well, and that's I mean, we can get and go further down the line. But I remember at the beginning when when you were coming in, yeah, and when I first got to compete against you too. I that's what I thought in a way was like this guy's very quick, so on the moving stuff you got to watch out, you know you got to pay attention to how fast he's yeah, going. You yeah. know, it's kind of the 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 pace that you need to keep up with in a yeah. way. I think I kept it from obviously just playing football. I mean, I was probably never, you know, athlete to athlete in football. I was probably never the fastest, but I was always running. And like when I moved into strongman, I I just kept it because. I was training the events weekly. Well, you have that athletic base, man. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it's coming over, and you've you've had to be very fast. Yeah, with different things. So when you you come over to strongman, very much the same thing for me. You're coming from basketball, so it wasn't hard for me to be fast and athletic and move and change direction and and do all of this stuff because it's what I had always done. Yeah, the hard thing was getting strong. Mm. Yeah, yep. yeah. So anyway, obviously, I, I finished seventh, and then it, it like. They had like an England's under 105, and then they have UK's 105. Um, and I think I, I placed maybe third at England's, and then I can't really, it's a bit rusty after there. But the first year, anyway, I did okay. I didn't do anything outstanding. Um, but I went away and was like, right, I, I looked at whoever was at the strongest on that event, who was the strongest on that event, and I like very quickly structured my training really well. And in 2011, I won every under one R five show I did. That's and, awesome. Um, literally in the second year, I think it was the second year because 2011 mid summer I did the British log record of 170 <laughs> at 105. That's one. So that hadn't uh, even been doing strongman for two years. So that's years. like in, uh, in pounds, like three 374 pounds, I think. Right. 170. Yeah, it's you know, and I and I did that, and the, obviously my, my my deadlift had gotten stronger, and I was still moving and winning the moving events, um, and I, I didn't really know. Like I started to question that, like, where am I going with this? Because winning is fantastic, but like I got bored very quick, like really quick. At the end of two thousand eleven, I was almost bored of it already, um, and there was a contest in March. Um, that was being done and I was like right I'm going to do this one we'll see how this goes and then I think I'll look at trying to do some open some open weight shows Um, and I, the day before this 105 contest I was 118 kilos the day before the day before wow and I had, there was hardly no body fat on me at all and I managed to make weight it was very hell wow that, um, that must have been horrible and that was the other thing as well. I was like, this is getting out of hand because I'm getting bigger. I sh- probably shouldn't be doing this anymore. Um, but I won, I won, I think, five out of six events. Um, the only event I didn't win was the Silver Dollar. And I blame that on my straps because um, I actually got told to wash my straps and then leave them in a chalk bowl. And I did this, but my straps weren't dry. <laughs> so when who I came told, to... Who told you to do that? Jack McIntosh. <laughs> Wash your straps and leave them in a chalk bowl. Yeah, yeah. He said it would give it. But the thing was, obviously, I, I hadn't, they hadn't dried. Yeah. And I'd done it a bit late. So, like, the idea seems stupid. But probably at the time, because I'd used his and was like, why are yours? Because it's Iron Mind straps. I was like, why are yours so rough and dry? And mine are, like, slick and oily. 
So he told me to do that, and I, I, yeah, when it comes to trying to do the deadlift, it was... <laughs> that must have been horrible. It'd be like a paste. It was not like nice. It, it wouldn't yeah. bite in at all. But anyway, that was my excuse for not winning the event. But anyway, this this contest was done, um, and I was I was done with 105. I was like, I'm, I'm done. I, I, well, I mean, you're... So 105 kilos for people listening that are working pounds. Yeah. It's 231 pounds, so you had to make weight at 231. And you were how much? 118? Yeah. Yeah. So a lean 118. Yeah. So that's 260, somewhere like 260 pounds, give or take, pretty close to that. So you're basically doing a cut of almost almost 30 pounds. Yeah, it was crazy. 30, like yeah. 15 kilos yeah, it was to get crazy. down. I mean, that's uh, that's a significant cut to get down, and especially if you're carrying that type of weight. I, I can see why that would not be fun and especially if you're winning you're winning all of this right so you have a year or a year and a half of winning yeah with the competition yeah it's like you said it's fun to win but then i think in your mind you're probably thinking like what's i want to go and and push myself a little bit more yeah it was almost a foregone conclusion so like this one this 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 contest also had a max log and i beat my other lift with 172 and a half but i'd already won the event with like 160 I was, I was. So you're ju- you're just pushing yourself at yeah, that point. Yeah, and uh, the yoke. There was a yoke. I I won that by a mile. The farmers I won by a mile. Like the stones I won by a mile. I I just gone on to another level. And yeah, it was like I I, I got bored because I wasn't well, really. Are, there was nobody that could beat me. That ty- I mean that type of log. I'm sure if you were if you were looking at the you know open weight category. That's still a very respectable log. Yeah, yeah. In, in an open category, let alone let alone a hundred and five kilo yeah. category. So, I'm sure you're thinking that in your head. I was. So that was that was. The, was that the last contest you did as a hundred and five kilo? It, it was done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was it done. Um, and I think I did a couple of shows, but the main one that I penciled my name down for, they were doing a, a Europe's qualifier. Um an open weight one and I was just fortunate enough that the guy that was that Darren had gone to on the gym knew of me and uh, he said I think you should include him because I yeah. think he can do well um, and I was only like I was saying this I was 120 kilos and, and I came into this show and the first event was Axel for reps and I won the event that's crazy yeah I think you were at the show wasn't you Terry yeah, I think Terry because uh, Jay Jay Hughes won the show, and then he participated in Europe's Strongest Man. Okay, well, actually, f- four events in, I was in the lead. <laughs> that's crazy, man! So, uh, and that's the first time you competed. Yeah, as an open. yeah, we had. The what, do you remember what you weighed there at that? Yeah, I was I was one hundred and twenty kilos. So you stayed that. Yeah. Um, and what year? What year are we talking? That's twenty twelve. Twelve. Okay. So I did this. I did this thing, but I, what happened with me? I think. Because the weights had got lifted, and I was competing with heavier weights. Yeah, but even though I w- I was capable and I showed I was capable, like I burnt out real fast. So after four events, I was I was done. I couldn't do the farmers. I was too tired, and the stones, which I'd just literally been to the same gym two weeks ago and did them. Yeah, I couldn't even do half of them. So it was, it was a six event six event. Yeah, content. Okay. yeah. So I just burnt out and it's gone from first to fourth which I was still very happy about. Um, but, you know, little did I know that the wheels in motion that were coming from this was that um, Darren was about to arrange a, a Britain's Strongest Man and he took the top four or five from this contest. To, to go straight to into go Britain's. Into Britain's, yeah. That's good. You know, and I got to compete with Terry and Lawrence and it was, it was very surreal for me. Um, and I think I came fourth there in Britain because... Lawrence Terry, I can't remember. I think it was Chris Gearing, maybe third. Anyway, I came fourth, um, and I was I was chuffed a bit. So I thought, well, this is where I want to be. I mean, I never even looked like thinking I was going to beat everybody, like beat likes of Lawrence and Terry. I just thought it's nice to come in and be at a, be competitive, be in the mix, absolutely. You know? yeah, but yeah. I wasn't just shorter than everyone. I was lighter than everyone too. You know, yeah. so. But anyway, I, I, I got a call. Um, it was Lawrence that called me first. He said, um, I'm not going to Worlds. I can't remember why at the 
time, but he said, you're the next person on the list. I was like, you're joking. <laughs> you know, like I'd planned for like a nice little bit of an off season, you know, like I was, I didn't really eye up anything to do for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, so, and then long behold, Colin phoned me up, um, got an invite to Worlds. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. I, I ended up at World's Strongest Man. So I'd done, in March, I did a 105 comp. And then in summer of 2012, I was at World's Strongest Man with all you guys. That's awesome. That's, and, that's uh, a quick, I mean, it's a quick, yeah, quick it's, turn from it, it's competing, massive. competing it's, at a 105 kilo level to get, get up to World's Strongest Man. There's not many of us that have done it. You know, like Bish has done it. Uh, but it's just for me I always thought I was too small I was too short um, I didn't think I could be statically strong enough going forward but um, you know I didn't let it stop me I, I got stuck in I won the first event actually I won the loading race in my heat so this would have um, been 2013 12 when 12. LA you just said 12 yeah that's crazy because you and I were in the same group in 14, 14. yeah and it was back in LA Yes. In Fort. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but basically that like spiraled me into the, into, into this massive accomplishment, you know, like. Absolutely. I, yeah. I was amongst guys, even if I didn't think I was ready, like you're not going to pass up the opportunity. No, no, not at that point. Um, you serious, don't, you don't yeah. pass it up. You go, you get the experience. And man, when I came home, I was so hungry to train. Um, and I just, I was just hooked, and that was me. I was like, right, I did the Britons again the year after. I got invited to Worlds again, China, um, and then 2014, I started to like really get in better shape. Um, I came second at Britons. I came third at Europe's, and then that was the group when I was in your heat. Yeah, you know, and I felt like I kept up pretty well, just the. Uh, Vildauer was a bit better than me. Absolutely. You know, and, yeah. and that's no shame because he was, he, in, on his day, in, in them years, he was a very good athlete. It seemed, it seemed like with, with, uh, with Martin, it all, he always was like right there. Yeah. He was yeah. right in the mix to make the final. I know, you know, Terry had some good, good battles with him. They always seemed to end up with but the you same know, like, then, you know, reason. like, that was, that was a yeah. year where I thought, hell, I've pushed to make the final here. Yeah. And, and I was really pushing on. Um, but you know, like what happened after that, I, I hurt my back uh, and I don't know what it was, but it was getting really bad. And I, and I carried on training around it in 2015. Um, I remember doing, we did the Britain strongest man and they had the log lift championships. Uh, obviously Z was there, Eddie was there. And I remember three weeks before I couldn't even clean a 170 kilo log. I was so it was hurt, hurt. Oh, no, yeah. It was, it was there was something going on, and um, just stubbornness. I said, I mean, Darren actually said to me, he said, just come, turn up, and, and see how you are on the day, which I did, you know. And I came, and I remember I went over to Rob Frampton and I asked him if he had any painkillers, and didn't ask him what he gave me. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just took it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I went out and I did two hundred and eleven kilos and and drew first place with Eddie and Z. Um, but then afterwards we had the deadlift uh, and something quite bad happened on the deadlift um, it was it's not really anyone else's fault it was just something that happened uh, we had the car deadlift but they had the deadlift lifted off a board you know so obviously lift yes. off the floor yep. well maybe with the way I was pulling because I was pulling back it came off the board so I had to lift it like six inches lower oh man and uh, I just remember feeling like a pop in my back. And uh, that was it, I had to pull out. And uh, but when and then after this show, I thought, <laughs> like, it was it was just getting worse. But then I had, I had my invite for Worlds, and um, I had the squat, so I thought, well, it'll be okay. Um, and this is what, this is what year? 2015. 15, okay. But, uh like I went to Worlds in 2015 and I was a broken man before I got there. Um, and I think it was a Thor's hammer. I did something to my leg. I ended up with a swollen leg. My body was, my I, body, yeah, my body was giving up on I me. I remember anyway. you being out at the pool and us talking about, talking about your leg and talking about 
I think you're back too. And it, you could just tell how de- it was almost like a defeated kind of like you felt like crap. And I, it was awful. That's tough. You know, yeah. yeah. I would even, I just got into such a bad place. Um, and, you know, back then really it was, didn't really have the, the, the resources of people around that are, at, that are here now to sort of guide me into what maybe I should have been doing. But anyway, after that, like it got that bad when we had um, Layla, my first child, that I couldn't change her nappy without being in complete, oh, complete pain. Yeah, couldn't lean over to the sink and wash my hands because the the pivot in my back it was it was almost probably like a sciatic nerve pain, um, and I so I stopped training. Um, I actually went down to like a hundred. 20, 125 kilos from 150 kilos. Wow. Um, and just wasn't training. Every time I kept trying to train, my back went again. Um, so in the end, I, I decided I'd go go for a scan. So I went for an MRI scan and it was a bit inconclusive. They sort of said, yeah, the way it looked, it's a result of because of your train. But then there was nothing that sort of like red flagged, this is sticking out or you've done this. But the guy said to me, there is an option you can take. You can go and get a like an epidural injection in your spine and it'll help reduce any nerve endings. So if there's anything catching for whatever reason, it'll reduce it and maybe relieve your pain. Um, so I organised that. Um, and weirdly enough, whilst that was being organised, he'd spotted I had a hernia in my belly button. Um, so I went and got this epidural done. And then I went and had a hernia operation not long after. Man. Um, and I'd left the gym I was in um, because they kind of they'd had enough of a strong man. The, the guy that owned the gym had sold it to a bodybuilder guy. And really, like, I had it good. I had, like, my own corner, all my kit in there. I had, like, a bit of a free reign. You know, and fair enough, the new guy came in and, and, and he didn't want that. So it ended up being... That I ended up, most of my stuff went in storage and I had no gym to go to. Uh, but I wasn't really training, so it was not really a big stress at the time. Um, and then I decided after I had this operation that I was going to set a home gym up in my garage. Um, so I set the home gym up, I bought some bits of kit and I started training again. Um, and weirdly enough, my back was good. Um, but what, back, what kind of time period? It was a matter of months. Um, I started training in September. And by November, I'd, I'm i pretty sure I did like a 350 deadlift. And I was back pressing like a 180 log. And I thought, damn, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting okay again. But you don't know what was wrong with it. I don't really know, no. like, Isn't that strange? It's strange because, uh. you know, but like one, I mean, I had the operation and my core was drastically weakened by it but i also think maybe it was weak earlier to that and that may be why my back gave up um so i bought like a safety squat bar i did all my squatting on there i did good mornings two three times a week um i just really tried to make my core really strong um and then i ended up competing at britain's in january of 2017 and that was just a tester to see if i could still do it and I managed third, <laughs> you know. That's awesome. I managed third. Um, I can't really remember what I did after that. I don't, I don't think I went to Worlds. I don't think I did much after 2017's Brits. I just plugged away, training away. Um, and then 2018 was the year when, when Eddie was doing his last Britons. And I actually came in at like, I was under 140 kilos at the time. And, um, and I really pushed him. You know, I just felt strong, I felt fast, I felt fit. Um, I was in good shape. And um, I just, like, this whole injury thing just was behind me. You just think it would It's, never... like, such a good feeling, isn't it? Yeah, like, I... Especially when you've had it going on for that long. Yeah. And then to to have that type of, man, this, all right, I'm yeah. through it, you know? that That's got to be great, a great feeling. I mean, it's probably, like, you know, sometimes things happen and it happens for a reason, but like that opened my eyes to core strength and core strength became like a really big part of, of how I trained. And, um, you know, like 
come 2019, like my lifting numbers were getting good. I wasn't just that fast athlete that everybody knew. I was actually statically very, very sh- like getting strong. Um, well, you were uh, you were strong, yeah. Not just yeah. getting strong; you were very strong. Yeah, so, I mean, like in two thousand, strong before that too. But yeah, I mean, two thousand eighteen worlds. I I beat Zadrunas at the squat event, and I remember I remember me and my wife stood there, uh, and we watched like Olbers go, I think Stoltman go. Zadrunas went set the time to beat on the barrel squat, but he had like. Janashia doing his raps, you know, yeah. and cranking these raps on. And then Kim did mine. And Colin, I remember Colin come over, he's like, whoa, Mrs. Hicks can rap knees. And it's like, well, she does a great job, you know, like. Why would you not have her? I would have not, yeah. but, you know, so I'm not going to get someone else to do them because they're not, they don't live with me. No. You know, they don't rap my knees, but it was nice for her to come and do it. And then me, I went out and I beat Z's time. That's awesome. You know, and that, that at the time was was a big deal. 100%. You because know, not many people beat Z at squatting in his prime. So No. Um, but yeah, you know, like in 2019, I, I won the Britain's Strongest Man. And then, you know, we were, I haven't even spoke about my second child that we had in this process. That's probably why in 2017 I didn't do very much because we had Tyler. Yeah. Um, every time we had a baby, I always stepped away and just made sure that I didn't put the pressure and stress on myself to to do a contest because I know that like I'm needed at home a bit more. And at the time, obviously, I worked away, so like I was out of the house at seven a.m., back at four p.m., and then I wanted to try and train. You know, it's a long day, and like, oh, a really long day. Um, yeah. So you know, like this was always my life. It was always trying to fit the training in in a very limited time. And I always managed to do all right, you know, like I've done well really with the with what I've had, you know, and, uh, you know, Kim's always supported me. It's not been easy for her, like we don't have a lot of support, you know, like I, you, I've, we've discussed this many times, but, you know, like it's not easy for us. We don't go out on date nights. We don't do very much together because we don't have many people that can look after the kids for us. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so, you know, it, you know, like, and then when Tyler was due, I took another step away. And I decided, I'll do a powerlifting comp. You know, I just, I don't know why. I never even looked at it and thought something I wanted to do. But I thought, well, I'm not going to be training four days a week for a while. Maybe two or three. Probably get away with doing a bit of powerlifting. Absolutely. And yeah. that was basically how it happened. I was like, I'll just squat, bench and deadlift for a while. Um, you know, and I got pretty good pretty fast. Um, and I did the powerlifting comp that we did. Um, and I pulled 1100, which was very, very good, you know, like for my first one as well. You know, and I had to travel to Australia for it. You know, the circumstances weren't great, you know, like I had a very stressful day before where they lost our luggage. And, yeah. you know, we had a, we had Jasmine with us. She was only three months old. You know, no nappies, no change clothes. That's, people don't understand that. Yeah, man. no it's, baby food. Yeah. So, you know, but I still turned up the day and um, I gave it my best. And I actually lost out on first by dropping the deadlift. Is it? And uh, it was quite a significant decrease in prize money from first to second. So, but, uh, you know, like I lost, I lost that really, but I still achieved 1,100 total, which was massive. You're 1,100 kilos. Yeah. 100 and like kilos the thing was, the British record, total record was like 1,005 kilos. So I, I beat the British record by nearly 100 kilos. Which is, it's insane, man. I mean, for you to just say, well, let's just do this. We'll yeah. just plug this in. Yeah. You know, I'll just go I'll just go do a powerlifting meet. And, and, and to put up the kind of numbers that you did. Now, the, the question fo- I have to ask following up on that is, what about, what about going back and actually focusing on it a little bit more and, and putting up, putting up, you know, a, a record that, that, most likely won't be touched or would be very hard to break because I mean, there's some big records right now, right? The, yeah. I mean, the thing is now, I mean, all time raw would be is 11, 80, yeah. 11, 82. You know, so, so you're 82 kilos off of that. I am. I am. But when you break it down, if I did like a, a 465 squat, a 300 bench and a 420 deadlift, which they're not unachievable numbers for me. 
No, I think those that's, are very achievable. That's yeah. eleven eighty five. Yeah. Um, but what I will say is, like, I'm in a position now where, at the moment, I work for myself. You know, I left. I left my engineering role. Um, I just I do a lot of coaching now. I have a lot more free time now, so I have an opportunity to train a little bit longer, a lot more stuff. And I don't see a reason why I can't implement them movements with my strongman stuff now, and it not hinder me. You know, because I'm not hindered for time. Like when I was doing the squat back then, like because my shoulder mobility is not very great. I'd spend 30 to 40 minutes trying to get under a bar and then I need people to wrap me. The squat the squat alone took two, two and a half hours. You know, and I just didn't have time to do anything else. Mm. It's like now, like, I do kind of have time. I could probably do that and then still go away and do some event training. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the I always used to say, no, I'm not doing another one. But, you know, I just think strength is strength. I want to be strong. I like training. I'm going to start doing a little bit and we'll see what happens. I mean, the whole half Thor announcing he wants to go for it has kind of lit something a bit with me. Yeah. It's made me think maybe I could join the ride a little bit and maybe I could do the same contest against him. Well, I feel like that, that would be interesting. I feel like a lot of people would be excited by that. Well, yeah, because, I mean, I, I don't know what Dan Bell's plans are, but at the minute... He Thor spoken about a comp end of the year. I don't know what comp it is, uh, but there must be something in the pipeline. Um, well, you would th- you would think you would uh, think that that there's something. There's got to be something as an end yeah, point for that. Yeah, to happen, I'd imagine. Right? I'm imagining that there's going to be a, a big dogs five in Australia. That's the rumors I've heard. Okay, um, you know whether Dan Bell goes or not. You know, like I'd be very interested in going. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I don't want to, the problem is when I did this whole going into powerlifting, um, I got stronger, but I stopped doing event training. It was the first time in my life that I didn't do any moving. So obviously prior to strongman, I did, I did football. And during the whole of my strongman career, I trained events all the so time. You, so you're moving around with weight yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I went for a significant period of not actually doing any moving. And then when I came back, to trying to do moving events, having got a lot stronger, is when I started with all these injuries. I mean, I, I had a, a calf tear, a hamstring tear. Bear in mind, I haven't really had an injury before. And uh, then I went to Worlds and I got my bicep tear. And then once my bicep was healed and I was getting going again, I tore my groin. Um, I mean, there's still like, there's still only really four kind of proper injuries. But like, I kind of got known for being injured for a very long time because the groin, the groin injury was the best part of twenty months. That's a, and that's a long time to deal with something like that. Yeah, and I mean and to go through it. I am healed now. I mean, you can see that with how we've been training. You know, yes. you know, I'm in a good place. But as I discussed, there's been there's a lot of lower body strength I need to build back up because I wasn't able to squat properly. I couldn't do a lot of single leg work because it affected the groin. So there's stuff that I just need to go away and work at. And, uh, you know, I'm in a good place. I mean, I'm excited about this year. You know, like, I've had a lot of times sat down thinking, am I done with this? Is my body done? You know, am I getting old? But weirdly, like, this year, I feel youngest I've been for 10 years. I just feel like, a new, like I've been reborn. Well, I, I mean, I th- I feel like, and we we have got to train a little bit here, yeah. you know, and, and you kind of touching on that. It's exciting, I think, for me because I I know what you're capable of when it comes to powerlifting. Yeah, because you're built you're built so well to do it, right? I mean, you have you have a a great body structure to do those lifts and to lift massive amounts of weight. Yeah, with them, and 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 again, it's not that hard for you to do. With that being said, I feel like right now physically, you're probably in the best spot I've seen you physically for strongman in a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, going into world strongest man, which is what we're really getting together to train for right now, you have to feel good about where you're at. I yeah, would say I like mean, especially I, after the last few days here. It's been it's been a long time since I've been able to say 
honestly, whatever contest is ahead of me, I can be ready for it. Like, I've always had something that's in the event list that's an issue for whatever injury I've had. So, like, when you invited me over last year for the Classic, I said, I would absolutely love to come. I'd bite your hand off. But I was just honest and said, Brian, there's about three events. I can't do them. And I don't want to come here to a show like that and yeah. not do three events. That's a, yeah, massive, um, massive. You know, uh, and, um, I, I, it's nice. I feel like I'm in the position where now, whatever the events are, even if they're not good for me, I can train them. And I've not been in that position for a long time. I've always been ha having trouble training certain events. And people won't understand how frustrating that is with strongman <laughs> oh, yeah. to, to go to go in and, and especially going into training when you've got something going on and trying to find a way to work around whatever that might be. You have to get creative. You have to figure it out. But going into a contest mentally and knowing that, for example, you're really going to struggle with and or not be able to do something in the contest. It's not a it, it's not a a, um, a calm. No. approach right you're stressing and then what you what you tend to do i think is put more pressure on the events that you can do and you're saying all right if i'm going to lose some points here because i'm going to be hindered i need to pick them up here so then you go even harder on the other events which can cause well you know, uh, yeah to be honest I, I did mess up events because of that reason yeah you know and um you know i feel like i've everyone knows me for being statically strong now which is kind of weird because I, I know I've deserved that sort of that limelight because of, you know, like I've I've got a big press, a big deadlift, but I was always known for being fast, and it frustrated the hell out of me for years now because I've just not been able to apply that training because of my groin. Yeah. I've like literally been training loading events and trying to jog and being satisfied that I could jog. Instead of be able to drop you the stay hammer able and go. to drop yeah. the hammer and go, you know, there's yeah. no boost. It's just plod. And, uh, you know, I've made some great changes. And I'm, and obviously it's come because I've been able to now train that way. I think, like, my body weight coming down is an application of being able to do more moving events. Um, and I'm just growing in confidence. Like, I can actually do these things now. Like I still, even when we were training, I'm still a little bit of a question mark in my head. There's a little bit at the back of my head that's going, will this go all right? <laughs> you know, and yeah. then as soon as I do that first couple of bags, when we're warming up, I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. I'm going, okay. You know, so there's still a little bit of processing going on in my brain of accepting that I'm actually in a good place and allowing me to apply it. But, you know, if I can get fast and fit, well, faster and fitter than I am now, yeah. which I still think I can. Pull that along with how strong I know I can be. I'm in danger. Yes, you know. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's that's what I'm saying as far as as far as your strongman overall kind of condition, the package you're going to bring to the table. That's that's where if if you're as well rounded. As, as you need to be what you will be yeah, yeah yeah that's that's i guess what i'm saying because it's it's one thing to be statically a monster and you're in your you're doing well in in killing those events and then you turn around and, and if you're not well-rounded especially at world's strongest man you're going to lose points on this event or that event and then you're going to win this event and it, it's a very much an up and down game Right, I think it's, if, it's if you worse. Can, it's worse now because everyone's getting very good across the board. Yes, so you yeah. can't afford to be that dramatically different. No, you can't be that good at something and that bad at something else. Yeah, it just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, you can't. So what? What? With, with that being said, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. What are your expectations? Um, I've been very, very chilled as always. Yes, about the whole the whole process of work. You're probably one of the calmest. <laughs> During an during an actual training session, maybe the calmest actually that I've ever been around, where you you have a massive weight loaded on the bar, and you're getting ready to do it, and you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm sit down and hang out for a minute. Oh, is it my turn? Okay, cool. Let me yeah you know, th throw my <laughs> throw my wrist straps on. I'll just go. You guys ready? Okay, we'll just the bar set. I'll just go lift it. You know, yeah, like yeah. there's there's not much of a 
uh, adrenaline type of spike or you're, you're no, amping no, yourself and up. I, and, I, and I've even been saying to myself, maybe I need to find that, but at the moment. You'll fi- you, you, what I will say is I've seen you find it and get much more serious when it's time. Yeah. So I feel like you only go there when you really need to go there. Yeah, yeah. I think for me personally, when I go there, I expend a lot of energy. Yes. And it's a very tiring place for me to be in because yes. it's not somewhere that I'm there very often. Yeah. Um, but you know, as, as you put me on the spot, going back to the original question, I mean, yeah. I I wouldn't be unsatisfied if I didn't make the final. I would be, you know, I, I just want to go and be able to be competitive and know that I've done my best. I'd love to make the final. I think I warrant. I think me, I deserve to be top ten in the world. But you know, it all depends on how I do on the day. Yeah. Um, but I just want to go and make sure that. I don't do bad on any event. That's my kind of my main goal going forward now. Is because is, it's always a it's always a, an event in a comp where I've gone did badly on that one. I want to kind of be able to walk away from the contest now and say I didn't do badly on any event. I did yeah. good on them all, and then I can build on that. You know, and that's kind of my focus at Europe's first because that's we've got Europe's before Worlds. You know, and it's things like Conan's and Loading, the two events that really, on paper, for the last four years, you'd have me finishing very badly at. I just want to make sure I come away and be like, I finish well on them. And if I can finish well, my chances of qualifying increase. Um, and that's how I'm going to look at it. That's how I want to approach it. If I've got you in my group or, you know, like Tom in my group, I don't want to be looking at what you're doing. I want to just try and concentrate on how I'm doing. And what I know I can do. Because uh, I haven't been to Worlds for years. You know, and, and like, in past years, I've always had events that I'm very bad at. Or I've not been able to train. Like, Fingers, for example, is a, an event that it's very hard to train unless you have one. Um, truck pulls, not the easiest thing to set up. You know, there's, there's always been events where I've just not really been able to train them properly because they're a bit too specific for, for what I have available. But, uh, you know, I'd lie if I said I didn't want to make the final. God, you know, I, I want to be top three. But, you know, like, I've made such a drastic change in my physical appearance in, in, in two months that I'm accepting that kind of this is the new me and let's just take this chapter slowly. Don't rush into anything. Yeah. Because, you know, I, age is just a number. You know, and like I am thirty eight end of this year, but I feel I feel less than twenty eight right now. It's crazy, really. You know, like I just feel so much healthier right now. Yeah, I well and, and I I won't be shocked at all if you if you come out and, and you're you're the type of guy that I'm asking that question, you're like, Well, you know, I, I feel like I can do this and I'm I'm getting in better shape the last two months, whatever. I feel like you're you're like you said. The, I think the word "dangerous" is a, a, an applicable word here, right? Because I've got to see what what you're doing and the shape that you're in, and in some of these things that are happening. I guess yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So going to the contest, I, I think you're exactly right. I think if you score points on those events, we have a log ladder in the qualifiers, which. Yep. You know, you could do tomorrow with no problem. Yeah, right. It, it's a, a a banker event in a lot of ways. So you're you're putting the attention where it needs to go, I think. And and you know, we know what you can do on those. People would be surprised at how good you are at throwing. So we have that kettlebell throw in the yeah, qualifiers yeah. as well. I you're, mean, I went away and I put a lot of emphasis on my deadlift. You yeah, know, like you did it once in your career. I remember you oh. saying to me one year that you you wanted to beat Zidrunas. Mm. And you did. But, like, that was your driver. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to be a big deadlifter, and I never was. People may forget that. But I never was a big deadlifter. And now I am. So now I go into a contest, it's like, there's a log, there's a deadlift. Okay, cool. I'm good at those. Those are good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's the other events? Absolutely. You know, I can afford to take my eye off them a little bit and maybe not even win the event, but I'm damn sure I'm going to probably come second. Yes. You know, but if I put my attention to the other events where I don't come six and I can come third or better, yeah, then it's worth that one point lost to the points gained. 
Well, hundred and that yeah. that just speaks to being well rounded, man. It's the right yeah. game plan. So, I think I think you know, like I said, I you're answering the question. And you're not necessarily stating like that's that's what's going to happen. We're going to yeah. take it so because it's, it's weird for me, mate. Because I, you know, like I haven't been. It's not like I've been in this shape for for a year. And I yeah. know what my body's doing and what I'm capable you of. Just, you just you gotta be, you, here's you know. the thing. You only gotta be you only have to be in that shape at the contest. Yeah, yeah. Right. You you still got if if you know the last few months here have gone the way they've gone, you still have some time yeah. to get even better. Like you said. But I mean I made the big change. I mean yeah. I dropped from hundred and sixty kilos to hundred and forty eight kilos. Yeah. That was the big change. Yeah. And I'm getting used to that now. Yeah. I don't like I had this thing I was joking to Terry about it. We were talking in the hot tub. I was saying like, when I was putting my belt on, it if I could feel like how much weight I'd lost, and then I had this process before I was going to lift my weights that I feel small, smaller is weaker. Can I do yeah. this set? And all yeah. of a sudden, this flipping things going on in my head, and uh, I've never had that because I've never dropped such significant weight so fast. I've never been in this place where I like, I feel weaker. Can I can I lift this okay? You know, and uh, I think that that's going now. Like I'm, yeah. like I'm starting to feel very good in my body again, and I and I don't actually feel like I'm going to be any weaker for it. See what that's a, such an interesting point you bring up. Such an interesting point because for me, I've kind I've kind of gone through different stages, if you will, of different body weights. Same thing. Yeah. Right. And for the longest time. The number on the scale, whatever that might have been, was related to how strong I was. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you and 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 it's a maybe not good relationship in a way because you look at that number and you say, Okay, well, the number's bigger, I'm stronger, I'm gonna be ready to go. And I have fought it. I have fought this very hard in my head, probably. And from a competitive standpoint, I always feel like, okay, what are we, what are we going to, to settle? We're going to settle who's the world's strongest man. Yeah. Right. So in my mind, that should mean the biggest weights are getting moved. And if everybody can't lift the weights, well, then so be it. Right. But, but I want to look at it as a contest and say, okay, it's very clear to me that if somebody walks out and they can move this easily and this person cannot, that's, that's, that's clear that this person's stronger. I never, I never want it to come down to a stopwatch click or the speed or how quick can you load this and then get back to the next thing. And you know, it's like in the loading races in my, in my mind, right? This is what I'm saying. I've, I fought with is it should be a loading race where everybody doesn't finish. So it's not a click, click, boom, boom type yeah. of thing. And I've had to reprogram my head now and just accept it and say, you know what, Brian, it's kind You're of weird. fighting. A, we've, we've kind of gone through the same sort of process. Yeah, I'm fight. Well, I'm fighting a battle that if I show up and I'm, let's just say I'm I'm 200 kilos, 440 pounds. All right, that's too big. It's just it's, it's just it's too it's, yeah. it's too big, and I could be able to pick up anything, move anything, that will not win me world's strongest man. No, right? No, not right. At, now, at a no. cer at a certain point, it would it would have. And that was the right package, depending on the contest. Yeah. But I've I've been very stubborn, and I finally looked at it objectively and took a step back and said, "I've got to bring the right package. I, I have to." Yeah, it's you not know? an easy thing to do. I mean, it's tough. It's probably harder for you because you've been in the era where you were all massive. Yeah. Between well, you look at look at you, the, yeah, look at the Thor, body weights. Yeah. Cedrunus, Eddie. Yep. There was a era in like. 2014 to 2016, 17, where you were all massive. Well, the majority, I w and I'd have to go back and look at exact weights, but I would say the major, um, more than half of the guys were over 400 pounds. Yeah, in the was, final, it was just a, it was becoming a very, very big man's sport. Yeah, and it just seems to have done a big sort of little twist and turn, and things have started to get lighter, yeah. more dynamic, which is great, but like. It's a very hard thing to change. Yeah. If you're on this pathway of getting used to bigger is better, you know, it's not like it was just one contest. It was several yeah. Arnold's. Yeah. You know, they, it was just 
you could only win them shows if you were a big yeah big dude well and that's and that was the goal and i think that's that's what i'm saying is i can relate to you in that fact where you're going down and wait and i'm i'm saying i'm sitting here saying to you okay based on what i've seen and you, the way you're looking the way the way things are going it's going well but then you're saying back to me well i'm adjusting to this new new body and you know i'm i'm, I'm down to wait like i'm questioning this the same thing for me right now i mean i'm yeah, still yeah. you know whatever whatever i'm at at this moment but i'm still probably about what you are down from my maybe biggest somewhere in that range right yeah, yeah. so i'm down as well and so it's kind of thinking that same thing all right well i'm I, I need to be strong at this weight even though a lot of people look and say well brian geez you're still you know this huge person but i'm not it's i'm just, not comparatively just, speaking yeah it's to, just so like it's, it's like there's a chemical in the brain you see you get lighter on the scale you relatively you re, you relate that to being weaker yeah it's just a natural thing well it's not not necessarily healthy but it's also what's needed and i think that i'm i feel better about it because i, I like i said i objectively stepped back and said look what do i have to do what do i have to do and i'm going to accept it so i've got to work on my speed i've got to work on my agility i have to get back to being athletic i i need yeah. to, to have these qualities to win this contest and i can't fight it and say well i'm just going to be stubborn and i'm not i'm i'm not going to i'm going to show up big and strong yeah and then yeah. when i get done with the event i'm going to sit here and say well it was too light it was too easy whatever and that's going to that's going to be my my safety net of saying what well, it was look at how easy this was this was too light <laughs> but that doesn't me saying that doesn't win the event no. does that make sense so it's kind of like I've become comfortable, I guess, with accepting that now where I fought it. And it's hard. And you're exactly right. You hit the nail on the head because I, I went through that era where everything kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And, the, and you had to build yourself and the package I had to bring to the table then was very yeah, different yeah, than yeah. now. And I didn't want I didn't want to accept it because I like that you know me I like I like heavier I like I like harder I like when you see competitors walk out there and they cannot do it and then you can do it and it, it's it's just this extreme kind of example of strength yeah where it's a very cutthroat game yeah. it's a very cutthroat can you pick it up and move it or can you not right and i like that so it's hard for me to let go of that it, and so it's it's neat to hear you kind of even though we are different sizes and shapes and whatever for you to go through it the same way i'm kind of i'm think, kind of I going through it in a way it harder for me to accept i mean if we go to the fact that you were being stubborn there was an element of me being stubborn too because for the past 18 months people have quite openly said to me that like when it comes down to static strength squat deadlift log there's nobody in the world stronger than you so i just kind of hung on to that and accepted that that's what i was good at or that's what i was known for but then when he started to do like the moving events and i was like well in my in my brain i'm like i know i can do these and i can do these well you know like i i remember doing a yoke run against eddie in 2018 and it was the quad bikes and everybody was putting in like 10s 11s 12s and I did it in eight and a half seconds. And on the same set of quad bikes, they were used at the World Tour, Tour Finals a year before. And Lawrence, I and Bibby, they got like nine and a half seconds. So like, I was Move. up there with like the best in the world. Absolutely. Moving. 100%. So, you know, like, I kind of thinking, yeah, it's great. I'm the statically, I'm the strongest. But like, it didn't win me anything. It didn't do anything for me. I couldn't even take that into powerlifting because I wasn't benching. Like the biggest powerlifter in the world comes to strongman, he's not going to do very well. Yes, he might do well on a couple of things, and it's just I just kind of had to make the change. I mean, it was it was when we did the team show. Um, I weren't well anyway, um, but I just got a bit irritated about my body shape and just how I felt and how I should feel. And uh, I just went away and implemented like loads of changes. There's probably like five, six, seven different changes I made. Maybe only one of them worked. I don't know. But like something's worked and it's working. So like now, even if I lost 10% strength, I'll probably gain 5% back eventually. Yeah. Or maybe I'll get it to where I was, you know, and, then I, and, I'm, and I'm lighter and I can still move. I want to be able to go and do a, th a thousand pound deadlift. And then I want to be able to go and do a loading race and yep. do it well. Yep. you know which i couldn't last year i did a, f 
four five four, and then my loading was terrible. Yeah. So well, and that it's 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 cool, man. Like I said, I feel like you're in a good spot yeah. going through that now, so we can relate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's 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 gonna. I think it'll be a good thing for both of us. You know, as we go in here, I think that um, you know it's it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, on, on that that knowing that knowing our brain, we'll be in the same group. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, man, it's it's uh, yeah. You, well, who knows how the groups are gonna shake out, right? Yeah. Because now it's one of these things where they literally tell you the last minute or the day of. I mean, we're gonna probably I mean, well, we'll probably we probably won't find out until the day the night before we're competing. Like, who's in the group? So I don't mind that. Well, now they've they, they made the switch to, to their credit. They made the switch to where every group is doing the same events, and I think that should have happened a long time ago. Yeah, I, I I do I do definitely agree with that. And and with that change, it doesn't matter how they break up the groups because no. everybody knows what they're doing. It used to be going in. Okay, you had a squat or a deadlift, or you had this type of press or this type of press, whatever. So there were so many unknowns where it was almost a a little bit of a luck of the draw type of thing. So, you know, for example, let's just use log and dumbbell. If you're great at log and bad at dumbbell and you and you get log, you're happy in your group. And if you get dumbbell, you're not happy. Yeah, yeah. And the outcome would be completely different. Or, you know, squat deadlift is a good example too because there's some guys that can squat like crazy. Give them a deadlift, it's not a great outcome. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I think that that doing – Doing the the uh, the same events uh, in the qualifying round <clears throat> with world strongest man is a good change, and therefore it it opens the door to pick the groups at the last minute. Um, you know, based on who who's shows up, who's there, if there's anybody that gets hurt at the last minute, that type of thing. So, it I think if you're going to do it with groups, which again that's a whole different conversation, but if you're going to do it, that's the right way to do it. I mean, they are making some good changes. I mean, we know how we feel about the stone off. Yeah. I feel like if they got rid of that now and well, they just put yeah. normal stones, there's very little for people to moan about when the groups are all said and done and you have your 10 finalists. It kind of feels like it's 100% right. Yeah. You know, like, I well, still feel like it's just... The, the change for the stone off was required in a way, but it's not a requirement anymore. Yeah, you know, there's just issues I've, every year. We're like, well, you see it like there's just somebody who's in third, who beats the someone who's miles ahead in second, or there's someone in fourth who's only half a point behind. Whereas if they'd have won the stone run, they could have qualified. It just seems a bit unfair now, yeah. and, and uh, I hope it's my hope that eventually that gets removed. Well, it should. You won't. I don't think you'll find anybody, no. anybody outside of me that's fought that harder. For, for my entire career because, you know, and, and to be fair, I'm probably part of the reason that they, they even implement it in the first place because I was the guy that, that oftentimes wouldn't need to go hard on stones or wouldn't need to do stones. Yeah, so it so, doesn't really make you know, TV. They, they brought in the double point system certain years and tried all types of different things to, to get it. And I, you know, I I explained to them, right, if if – from a from a athlete perspective, it only matters how you place in the final. You have to make it to the final. This is the game that you put in front of me, right? This is the the challenge that you put in front of me as an athlete. Is you're saying I've got to get through this group to make it to this final, and that's where that's where you find out who the best is, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the least amount of work I possibly can because I'm I'm playing the game. It's a strategy yes, game, yes. right? So I'm going to do the least amount of work I need to do in the qualifier to get to the final. Of course. Yeah. Right? And then that's that's where I'll go 100% is in the final. So no matter how you place it in front of me, that's how I'm going to do it because I'm a, I'm an athlete, but I'm also competitive in the fact that I, I want to do well in the final. So if I put out effort here, it takes away potentially from the effort I can put out in the final, right? Exactly. It's only logic. It's logic, yeah. right? Yeah. So the stone off, I would agree. Uh, you could make the argument that there were certain years at World Strongest Man where the groups, for whatever reason that might be, your your top one or two did separate a little bit and kind of run away a little bit, yeah. right? And I don't think that the, the top guys now are any 
better at all than the top guys were, you know, throughout my career, right? I don't think there's a difference there. What I think the, the difference is, is the depth of the field has gotten a lot better. Definitely. A lot better. So, you know, let's just say maybe 11 through 20 or or maybe even 11 to 25, whatever, or up to 30 even. Those, all of those competitors are tougher. They're tougher, right? And And you have guys walking into groups and you and I were talking about this where they can potentially take points. Of course they can. Right. Everyone, so everyone, I think everybody who's there has potential to take points off people. Now. Absolutely. No, nobody wins every every event in the group anymore. Nobody really walks away with it anymore. No. So that with that being said, though, now what what the Stone Off is doing is taking away from the sport. Of course, right. Exactly. That's that's what it's doing. So what you what you've got is a scenario where you're going to this contest. And potentially, potentially, going into the last event, you could have three guys, four guys, all maybe a point to two to three points apart. But if you run the stones as a normal event, fourth place could go to first place, first place could go to third place, right? It all could shift all in that one event, right? Which, if you which, run it Which for normal. me, the way you've just said that makes good TV. Great TV, yep. So... They need to sort of look at it from that angle. Yeah. Because I know that that's the main reason they wanted the stone off is because they needed to keep the people, the viewers, interested. Yeah. Which, again, I still understand. Yes. But I feel that, like it's not doing it from a sport perspective and an athlete's perspective. It's not... It's The word fair is what I want to use. It's not probably the correct word, but it just doesn't feel fair. Yeah. And... You know, like I just feel like well, you, you know, if you if you if we revert back to a stone run, it's just like any show, it can just change. The stones change. I mean, yeah. how many times I've heard Colin say this? It's called come down to the stones. Yes, yeah, because it does. Yeah, because anything can still change, well, especially it, when yeah. the points are that tight. Oh, it, it, it absolutely, and I have seen it happen. We, you've seen it happen. I'm, I mean. We've we've seen it happen in strongman, like literally, it's happened where it, 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 one guy could maybe misload something or mess it up, or what. I mean, this is this is why it's not over till it's over. No. But you know, with with that being said, it's it's one of these things where where a, TV is important, right? Like that's part of, of World's Strongest yeah. Man, getting it on TV, keeping the viewers. But I think I think that the audience has grown for the sport in general. The popularity has grown, and I think the fans, the fans in general, if you if you have a group where the athletes are going to be competitive, which I, I very much think that the groups are going to be very competitive this year. And if it plays out where somebody might be in third, but let's just say Stones is a very strong event for them, right? Of, or maybe they're in fourth and that Stones is a killer. They're going to win the Stones in the group. Yeah. But they've made it through these other events and 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 kept themselves in contention at least enough as it stands right now they're in fourth place they don't even get an opportunity no so you're out right but first place may only be three points ahead but then the first place guy may not be very good at stones and so day, it's still so, six points available. well and you're waiting you can never wait one event more than the other events right so this this is strong man as, as a whole so you you know let's just say you're great at pressing what you are. So you could change right? it to this. I was just having the same thought while you were speaking. We could be like, right, so this stone off. We have a log off. Mm. So we do a one eighty log. You've got thirty seconds to do it. I'm going to be laughing all the way to the final. Of course, yep. Because I could probably pretty much know I'd beat anybody in that. Well, and there's and we've seen that we've seen this play out, right? It's it's already been in enough years where I you know we don't have to go into all that, but I've seen it play out where. There were competitors that had a massive lead in second place, and they were not as good at stones as a person in third, but they were up by five points, six points, whatever, yeah. right? Which they've earned through competing in the other events. They've earned that lead. And now that lead is nothing going into the stones, and they are unfortunately don't make the final. On you know, so I I think that you know obviously we can have our opinion, and yeah. this is and I can have my opinion as I have said. And I even even last year, last year, I was the only athlete in the in the meeting that raised my hand and said, I think that we need to get rid of the stone off. I would love to just talk about it, 
is it can we can we talk about it you know as an athlete you know perspective i think it needs to go out now with that being said the way that the groups played out last year i went into the stona for the first time ever right and i only had to load one stone against bobby and that's the the way that that played out which for them unfortunately they didn't get any tv time out of that that it didn't play out the way that they probably had hoped but i fought against it and i benefited from it right and i would the thing is for a guy like me you put me in a stone off i'm gonna benefit it's it's actually ironically enough it's kind of a safety net for me yeah if i get into trouble i like that I like stones. I'm 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 happy to do stones basically against anybody. Yeah. In my group, you put anybody in my group and put a stone off in front of me. I'm happy. That's like a safety net. So I, it's very ironic that I've argued so hard against it because it's something that's so good for me. If it was log, because, you would you because would, you're not looking at it from a selfish point of view. You're looking at yeah. it from a sport and everyone else's point of view. That's exactly it. Exactly. Yeah. And so like, I mean, if I you want to get the best ten athletes, you don't find the best ten stone lifters. No. No. Yeah, you and want that's the argument. Yeah, and that's that's the hundred percent the argument. And so it's it's like for me, I've gone into world strongest man, and and, and like I said earl- earlier, a few minutes ago here, like I fought it as far as like a strength perspective. So I've I've been stubborn with that, but I've also always 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 tried to fight for the athletes, and I've tried to yeah. fight for what's right, and that's why the stone off. You know, I would say that, but one thing that that. I have to do for me this year is again you're put you the way I look at it is you put you put this game in front of me right and the the game is the qualifiers and if you're going to put the stone off in that's part of the game and then we get to the finals and then that's the new that's the next part of the game so as much as I disagree or 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 don't want something to happen or whatever I very much have decided that I don't care I I can't, right? Because if I put energy like I have into going there and then we start having these discussions and I have try to have the discussion with whoever it might be about the stone off and why it should be out. It's negative energy that you don't This need. is the this is exactly it. It's exactly it. So I've decided like we can have this conversation now and I think yeah. it's 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 good. It's good. It's healthy to have that conversation, but as I get to the contest, to me then it just turns into this is my game. You're going to give me your part of the game is a stone off. Then if I have to do it, I do it, you know, but this is the way I'm now going to structure my game based on you having a stone off. So what we need to do in the athletes meeting is film Colin when he says, does anyone have any questions? And he looks at you (laughs) and you say, I don't have any questions. Don't have any questions. That'll, that might be the first time in history that that I'm not gonna. I'll probably still come up with a question, but it's not gonna. No, be, no, I think not I, gonna I, be. I, hear you. I think I think yeah. surrounding yourself with nothing but positive energy. Don't dwell on anything because at the end of the day, they're not gonna change anything there. No. So it has to be done after. Yeah. You know. Well, and it's it's. I think you're you're hitting the nail on the head. I think both of us right now, the conversation we're having is coming out of love of the sport exactly. right and and you know. you know the thing that the thing that i know and you know it very well is how hard you have to work to get there right so now we're not only going to train stones we're training every other event that's going to be there so you've put all this work into all these other events and your body of work is what should be the measuring stick yep you right so to go in and, and if you're able to get in a spot where you're ahead and stones may not be your best thing but you've now separated yourself with these other events you're the better athlete you deserve to go right and that's how that's that's the argument that that could be made and i very much think that it it will play out that way where i think it's going to be highly contested especially in that second third fourth position in the groups for sure yeah yeah and i think that that having the stones and the other thing that you do is instead of giving the first place guy a buy which now again now i'm going back on myself because how many years did i win my group yeah yeah, yeah. and i did i got to rest you you put a stone off in and now i don't have to do anything right i just sit back and do nothing but let's just say i'm only half a point ahead in first place and now you run the group of stones i now have to work right so you actually get more out of me if i'm in first place in my group because i have to still i have to do something to get into the final yeah so there's there's a likelihood that you At get the end this. Of the day, that the sports evolved. It's evolved, yeah. and you know the the way that it's run has to evolve. Yeah, and I know it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, 
but you know, like maybe it'd be nice if we if we had everyone speak about this. Yeah, to actually know well, what everyone else thought. It's because well, it, people keep quiet yeah. about it, and because yeah. they're scared of being, you know. Thing is, when you have an opinion, people usually say it, you're moaning. Well, this is not. I don't think anybody's going to listen to this and say you're moaning because again, <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying and what you because the thing is, stones are not bad for you either. No, I mean right? I so I, I won the stone off against yeah. Bobby. Yeah, but you know, like the, the the stones were hard that year because we we were in that room from I was with the first group. I was there from six thirty in the morning, and I did log like late morning. Yeah, and I didn't do my stone off until like eight thirty p.m. That was horrible, and yeah. I was in a bad way. But you know, like. I was better at stones, and I got my bye to the final. Yep. You know, and I was, I was generally, like, I knew in my group as well that, like, if I got in the stone off, I stand a good chance. Yes. Um, but again, you'll play, we'll both play the game the yeah. way that it's put in front of us. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, I think that that's certainly part of it. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, it's it's like you said, I think it's, it's, it's nice and, you know, part of, this platform podcast having a talk and and you know i'm i'm i mean i'm certainly not saying on on here anything that i have not said yeah right yeah. and and every i'm very clear very clear about what you know, i'm I very much have, the same brian yeah, is yeah, yeah. what you see is what you get with me yeah usually if i've got an opinion and i'm going to voice it i'll say it anywhere yeah uh, but you know i always try and take a step back f- f- and, and i have an opinion as if i wasn't an athlete usually yeah because you know like for me, as good as I can be at strongman or as much as I love it, I always have treated it all very much like a hobby. Yeah. You know, because for that same reason, like when I hurt myself and I couldn't do it, my life still went on. I was still a dad to my kids. I was still a husband to my wife. I still went to my job. Nothing really changed apart from the fact I didn't get my outlet. I didn't get my, you know, my training. Uh, and, and I was very miserable for that, you know. But like, I've always sort of treat strongman like a hobby because I just know that realistically, when you're in a kind of sporty environment, it can always end very quickly. You know, like a footballer can have an injury, and that's his career done. And what does he do from there? You know, it's it's. I always try and sort of look at it from that outlet. Like, I want to be very good at it. I'd love to take it. I take it quite seriously now. I've took it more seriously now than I have done for years. But I still always, you know, have the outlook of there is much more to my life than just strongman, you know. And uh, I think that's why it sort of keeps me in, in check. You know, I don't, I don't really have crazy expectations, but at the same time, I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, you know, well, so. like you said, you're still improving, man, and 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 you're you've fought through some different things and overcome some adversity through your career, and and any any person that's been in the sport, I think, for as long as you have, as long as I have, you're going to have to overcome that type of stuff Definitely. at some point, right? Yeah. You're it's 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 going to come in a lot of different ways, potentially, um, you know, different uh, whether whether it is an injury or other life things or you know like this type of stuff but you you find a way to make it happen and you overcome it and i, I mean for me man I'm, I'm happy that you have overcome everything you have and that you're in the spot you're in and you know i think that there's you know some some really good things uh coming up whether that you know is in the form of a log record <laughs> or in the form of a powerlifting record or i mean you can you can do whatever you want to do and i think that that's kind of neat in listening to you talk is those those outlets are open right and right now it's strongman so we'll focus on strongman instead of pushing you into you yeah, know, into, yeah into whatever yeah. else but uh it'll See, be my, fun my, my wife will, will be my wife obviously she does powerlifting she she actually has a bit of a, a dream she wants to do a contest that me and her do together. Together, that's kind of something that she wants to do. Okay, um, you know, and like I've put it off and put it off, and then now I thought I had a look at it, and the seeds been planted. The more I think about it, I think I do have the time and the resources to sort of start doing both. Yeah, you know, like I don't have to put all my focus in powerlifting. I don't want to get any bigger and go down that road but we'll just see yeah you know, like i've kind of s- tried to learn to just not say no to things and be open-minded about them 
Absolutely. You know, like a really good one is is I used to always train at one o'clock. And I was like, that's my training time. That's been my training time for the last 12 months. And then my wife decides that it's better for her that she trains at 10 a.m. And she's like, train at 10 a.m. with me. And I'm like, nope, I can't, can't do it. And I was a bit, that was my reactive response. Can't do it. And as time's gone on, I've processed the idea. And now I train, <laughs> I train earlier. Because, like, for me, I don't do change instantly. I like to process. Yeah. I do things slowly. And then I just find it doesn't have a big impact on me. So, like, I processed the idea for, for a while. And then when I finally did it, I realized, actually, it actually benefits me more because she's obviously with me for one. Yeah. And then secondly, I'm not having to rush my sessions. Yeah. It's not getting late in the day where I'm like, right, I need to go and pick the kids up. I need to rush this or I need to skip that. You can get through it. I get through it. It's like I've got almost too much time. I don't have any excuse to not finish my session. Yeah. Um, unless there's just something odd, like maybe, I don't know, if there's something for school I need to go to or an appointment, but they st life things happen. But like, you know, it, it, it's just nice to be adaptable. And, and to be honest, that's what we're supposed to be. A strong man's meant to be adaptable. Yeah. You know? And I think a lot of us forget that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I sort of have to sort of think about it or someone mentions it and then I go away and slowly like that seed grows in my head. Yeah. If you'd have asked me if I wanted to do powerlifting even just two months ago, I would have laughed at you. Yeah. But I'm now it's, I can see the seed in the park. <laughs> and, <you know. laughs> Who well, knows, I mean, after, after we trained the other day, it sort of made me realize, geez, you know, this, this, you know, this could go crazy. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. No, it's great, man. It's yeah. exciting. It's exciting. You know, yeah, I'm, and, I'm looking and, forward and weirdly, to like for someone that likes not known for grip, I, I'm not known for very good grip, but like I'm very good with mixed grip. Yeah, you know, like I've pulled with, for, with your deadlift, yeah, yeah, with my deadlift. So I think I could pull for four twenty. Yeah, you know, mixed grip, which you know, like it's not very easy for many people in the world. No, to do no, that, you know. That, so. Well, I mean, it would it uh, would definitely play a um, a big part in in you know the in the record. Yeah, right. So. You know. We'll see. I mean, I, I, <laughs> not that the record's coming or anything, but you know, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, like I say, I just I kind of learned to try and not say no to anything, and, yeah. and like my almost my my favorite thing is like maybe we'll see, we'll see, because, we'll see. You know, I don't I don't make them. Rash I think decisions. that's I think it's the right thing for you, man. Yeah, I yeah. think it's the right thing for you to answer that way because I think you you're exactly right. I think you need to process it and think about it, and you know, I I can uh, tell. You know, the more I'm around you, the more that that's kind of... Because the biggest problem is, Brian, is like what we've trained is essentially events. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I've yeah. loved it. I've yeah. loved coming here. I've loved training with you. I've loved doing what we're doing. And I think if I did powerlifting, I won't be doing any of this. Yeah, yeah. You dropped that out, yeah. But I think this time would be different. If I did do it, I would still do these. Yeah. I just maybe wouldn't go quite as heavy. Yeah. And i keep my hand in. And then at least... I'm still a strong man. You could you could always throw it in as accessory and yeah. You know, I mean, I've I've got thing. my plan now going forward, yeah. and and, uh, and it should work. Yeah. And it just gives me the options to like almost to be adaptable as you are in strong man. So if if you have a log or if you have a dumbbell, you you've had your hand in, and then when you've got your contest that has the log, you zone in, yeah, because you've kind of been training it a little bit anyway. Makes sense. Not training it too heavy. But if you're training it a bit. It's not a drastic change. Yeah, you just train it a bit more. Yep. So that's what I want to do. I want to. I'll do my squat bench deadlift, but I'm still going to train my events. Yeah. And uh, try and do most of them light and zone in on whatever contest is ahead of me. Makes sense. So that's what I'm going to try and do anyway. I love it, man. So, I love it. Well, it's been yeah. been fun, man. It's been fun having you on, having you over. We we still have a little bit more training to do. Yeah. Before I mean, we get you out of here, it's but, been great. I mean, yeah. you know, like. We've been friends now quite a few years, and obviously, we, we you know I help now with the with the evolution, and, and yeah. we're grateful for that. Yeah, Evolution Athletics UK. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, it's it's nice to come here, hang out with you, you know, and, and your family, and it's just a very relaxed environment. But then, you know, it's, when it's time to train, it's nice how to see the guys come. And it's a very very good energetic environment. It's quite toxic, actually. I think even Terry is going to go a bit home with a bit more of a 
kick up his backside. So. No, it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and I think I will as well. You know, like it's it's sort of been the boost I needed because um, I was a bit down after Britain's. I felt like I slightly underperformed in my own head. Um, struggled to take away the positives of it. And then I, when I wanted to try and start training, I got sick. Yeah. Um, it's kind of come at a good time because it's sort of like, because I knew I was coming, I trained hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I flew here Thursday, and then we've trained hard since I've been here. Yeah. And, um, you know, even like if you take the Fingles, for example, like you said you're going to train Fingles. I was like, oh. I, <laughs> I can see the look on your yeah, face. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Brian, I can't do Fingles. I'm no good at Fingles. And then I did it, and I was okay at it. You know, yeah. like that's kind of sometimes what I'm like. I don't really know what I'm good at sometimes uh, more so because it's the confidence from training it so like if we did that again next week I would know I could do it 100% and I'd go at it a bit harder well, you could see you can see too the confidence building that's why I'm saying yeah, yeah. I, like you're sitting back and looking and kind of analyzing and saying wow that went all right that went all right it's it's like you like the boost you can almost see it yeah. in your head and and your your energy and um, yeah. And everything is better, man. Yeah. So, but it's it's just so be funny positive. being here working in pounds. I mean, yeah, you might as well you might as well tell me in a different you know in a different metric that I don't understand either because we'll we'll be benching. You'd be like, this is so many pounds, and I'm like looking at you like like whatever. What yeah. is this? You know? <laughs> and I, and, I, and in the yeah. stone, I was like, well, I don't want to go heavier than one fifty stone. Yeah, and um, I thought this stone we were doing was one fifty, and then you tell me it was whatever pounds, and we figured it out. Oh, it's one sixty something kilos. Yes, and I'm thinking I'm picking up one fifty. So yeah. you know, it's it's funny. It's funny. I mean, I'd probably end up stronger than I'd ever be if I had to train here because I wouldn't even know what I was lifting half. Yeah, the time. perfect. That'd be perfect. <laughs> You'd probably perfect. put a, a two hundred thirty log on, and I thought it was two ten. You know, like it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's what would happen. So. Yeah. Well, it's been fun and uh, 100%, I'm enjoying man. my time here. So Love it. Love it. Well, make sure if you guys are not following Graham Hicks, give him a follow. What's your what's your Instagram? So it's at Graham Hicks UK. UK. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It did yeah. used to have WSM on it. But I didn't really like that one. So you changed it? Changed it to UK. Okay. Yeah. UK. So look yeah. him up. Uh, give him a follow. And uh, appreciate you coming on, man. It's yeah. been fun. Been fun. Yeah. It's now time to go and eat. It is time to eat. I hope you all are doing amazing for now. Going to be great, and we'll check you guys later.